After full deliberation by the executives of the National Association of Onion and the failure of government to respond to our cry, we have hereby reached the following decision. One, we are calling on the state and federal government to restore law and order in the state. And we are calling on the good people of the southern part of Nigeria to live with the Hausa community in peace, as we are only there for our lawful businesses. We also call on state government to collaborate with federal government to set up a committee to investigate the incident that leads to the loss of life and properties of the Onion Association members. Furthermore, if the government fails to adhere to what we are saying, we are shorting the supply of onion to the entire south by Monday, the 7th of June, 2021. And there will be no truck that will be offloaded by 12 midnight on the 10th of June, 2021. Thank you and God bless you all. Hello, Prof. Good morning. Uh, yes, good morning. No, it's good. I will continue to remind our people, uh, you know, about the event that, you know, because we all started, we saw this event, the issues coming, and we started alerting our people on the need for us to be food reliant. And uh, this was what happened sometime in the past when there was crisis, and uh, we saw the reaction of the suppliers of onions. Uh, who are threatening to cut down supplies and completely cut us off. And it should be a source of motivation for us to uh, look inward rather than a complete problem. Yeah, necessity is a uh, model of invention. We, we can grow onion here, very simple and easy. You, you, we have developed onion seeds but I can teach you how to develop your own onion seed here. When you take an onion, cut it the way you cut orange. Okay? The one that is root down, right. around. Urinate and keep your urine for four days. After four days, dilute it with water so much that you will not perceive the other the urine. Put that water in a small, small plastic container. Onion you cut and put it there. After four days and five days, it will produce seven to eight onion. Then you pull out those onion it produce and plant on the ground. So if you have 100 onions, you can be sure of 500 onions. In other words, within one week, you can have more than 1,000 onions in your farm. Now, in onion, you don't need to put it in the ground. You get empty bags that are not very big. Something around, something like one, one foot empty bag and plant four onions inside it. Put sand, put sand. And that onion you have not grown, just within four months, I have a trail of onion. So that one is an easy, it's idiotic for anyone to think that you can use the food you are producing to uh, intimidate, to harass, and to monopolize other people's way of reasoning. There is nothing impossible to be produced in the South. I'm not against the North or against anybody. All I'm telling them that our weather here, condition of our uh, climate, enables us to produce everything. We have acclimatized it. We can, I've told you now how you can produce onion. If there is any problem for production of any crop or any animal, let's say fish or whatever it is, cow, whatever, we will teach you how you can do that in a commercial quantity so that you don't need to fret or to become afraid or be worried or to do rush buying. You can produce onion without buying onion in the market for the rest of your life, in your homes, at your corridors. So you don't need onion. We don't actually need onion. And when we not, there are glots, and the farmers will cry out because exportation of onion is not a big business for now.
I'm telling you, even ginger and turmeric is a bigger business to export than onion. And uh, after some researches are done all over the world, the best place to grow ginger in the whole world is the south, not even the north. So it's because the people in the south are not making efforts. They are not making efforts to agriculture as a priority, to saving lives. Agriculture does not only save lives, it helps you to become self-reliant, it helps you to become able to become creative and inventive. And you know that creativity governs rules the world, the planet we're inside. If you are not well fed, if there is economy problem, it is from food. Any nation that has food sufficiency has economic growth. Look at Israel, the land of deserts. Look at what they are doing to the whole world. Most countries that are advanced in this world do not import food, rather they export. So that is true. That is true, Prof. That is be, true, Prof. Food should be a priority for development of food the production should be a priority. priority. Meanwhile, Prof, let us take this clip. Let us take this clip of what you've done uh, uh, over the weekend. Let's do this. This is Buddhism World Gladiator. And what we're doing now inside this bag is to plant yam. Today's date is 6th of August. 6th of August 2021. What we are doing now is filled with sand, which we have already put out some money. And then we soak it in a headworm, whipping, and then we have yam. We have plantain, banana, turmeric, ginger, onion, pepper, so many other things in the farm. All we want to establish is that we can plant all the year round. Not only that, you can harvest yam three times a year. So this is yam. These are the bags we are targeting. In the next few weeks, you see this yam growing. As I said, today is August 6th, 6, 2021. Nobody farms yam in August, but we are going to remove this yam in December. In other words, we can farm yam three times a year, every four months. But when you plant yam in the ground, ordinary ground, you harvest after six months. But when you plant inside here, you harvest every four months. That is only what we are doing. And this is your food work that you are talking. And this is the farm site. And so on and so forth. The farm is up to very far inside where we have planted. Uh, we can move around. When we have planted palm trees, see our palm tree here. Look at the palm tree. Look at it. That's another palm tree here. That's another palm tree here. And then you continue up to the end. And the kind of palm tree we have, the type that produces every branch. Every branch of the palm tree is producing. These are our palm trees. These are the roots. These are the mountains. What we are going to farm here. I hope we understand what we are doing. If, well, if what we are doing is all right, we need more people on the on the farm. We need more people to invest in their own farm. That is our area where we plant Irish potato. Irish potato, as I said, yep. our Irish potato is going to grow here. We're going to have Irish potato here. These bags. These are the bags. We were. We're going to plant them today and tomorrow. Today is 6th, tomorrow is 7th of August. So this is how it is being organized. And then we can puncture here, by the side here, puncture it and plant uh, pepper, plant uh, all kinds of other crops by the side. While the top is corn, maize, and Irish potato. Uh, or yam, and Irish potato, and maize. From the plant there top. Why the middle down is uh, what we have just shown you. This is uh, one of them who came to work here. There are other workers there. That is the meaning of saying, let us all together farm our land. Our lands are very fertile. Don't need artificial fertilizer. Don't use artificial fertilizer anywhere because our lands are very fertile. That's exactly what I'm telling you. I'm here to farm. Tomorrow I'm going to Diato. Next week I'm going to Lagos. The upper week I'm going to a boy state. We keep on setting up farms. I set up your farm. It's a mission. It's a mission. It's not a business. But those who have it, do it as businesses. Thank you very much.
for witnessing this live. Sorry for the noise on the background. It's part of the farm projects. And I know that we can use human urine. We can use human urine. Okay. We can use human urine to be able to fertilize our farms. That's exactly what here we do because this place is for um, ginger, turmeric, onion. That's why we just till the ground. We don't do any trees here. That's exactly what we have. If you observe, we do not kill any plants. We don't burn in the farm. Go with fire on the farm. You collect the gem and receive manic manic. That is exactly what we have. I thank you for listening to the Foodism World Gladiator. Just get connected, get in yourself to invest, be part of the project. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you for that reportage. Uh, can you please give us a little highlight on what that project is all about? Now, what we have there is project demonstration farm. And we have 19 crops there growing. Those ones that I said are impossible, we are not growing them. We have turmeric, we have ginger, we have pepe, we have um, uh, Irish potato, we have yam, we have uh, corn, we have um, so many of them. And some of them we're experimenting. It's a demonstration farm. Everything is growing now right here in the in the in the east we can that is in oba yesterday i went to ideato the place called apollo apollo at ideato and there are two places there next week i'm going to establish those who have land in lagos and they're using the land to build houses we're going to turn those lands to food production then you can take the money you get from the food production from the crops and invest them in the east because if you don't wait for caretaker or landlord or whatever or tenants to pay they cannot pay you what a plot of land can give you now a plot of land there can plant up to four thousand yams i want you to understand that the normal thing is to plant yam between six and seven months once a year no we are now going to be planting yam every four months the yam i just planted uh two days ago we are going to harvest all of them in December. And during the harvest, I will let you know how simple. I don't need to do any digging. I just take a cutter, cut the bag, and pull the sand away, and then remove the yam, and then put the sand back again and plant another yam again, the same sand. Now, when we do this, the crops are no longer competing for the manure of other plants around. This way, we can plant all virtually everything we need and harvest them faster. Onion, garlic, turmeric, um, ginger, uh, pepper of different types, their varieties, coconut, palm trees, uh, banana. That we have banana there. We have plantain there. We have our shard for apple. Everything we are doing and bringing in everything that is impossible to grow, we bring them, we work on them, we acclimatize them, and they start growing here. So in the next, before July next year, the eastern region can be exporting apple, fresh apple to any part of the world. That is exactly what we are wanting, that there is nothing like impossible until you try that. And when you say impossible, I am is you, I am possible. Now, when you remove yourself inside because of your mental orientation or because of the way you feel it is impossible if you remove yourself from impossible the remaining world will be possible so all things are possible unto all those people who remove themselves from the language impossible we just have to try everything and we know that the business of farming is very lucrative very very lucrative I'm telling you, you can make more than 1,000 to 2,000 percent profit, not 100 profit percent. No, we're asking you that we, we have done a lot of research, a lot of research. Our plantain, our banana is no longer, are no longer the ones you used to have before. They are all 100 percent organic. 
None is artificial. None is GMO. We don't touch the genetic blueprint of any crop or any plant. This is how we are doing not only in plants, in animals, in cows, in goats, in snare, in grass cutter, in everything. We are just 100% fighting a war, foodism war gladiators, to make sure that this place does not suffer for shocker again. Some of you who are below 50 years, who are uh, below 50 years or 40 years, will not understand the language called Kwashoko. If you know what it means, you will have the zeal as we have today to make sure that we are not going to leave this planet Earth as vegetable. I didn't come to the Earth to vegetate. I came to on the sand of time. And if you have come to this Earth to buy a good house, to have a good wife, to travel abroad, then you are most miserable person on Earth. To have good money, to run around the planet. How many have done like you? And where are they now? What is that? the names of their forefather 200 years ago? What I be remembered for? Come and join and turn this place. I'm telling you, keep us alive the 10 years. The South will be like Dubai. What was Dubai 20 years ago? What was Abuja 20 years ago? Now, this by collective thoughts, not one person. Collective of, of different minds. If you go to Kano, Kaduna, and most places you have in Nigeria, 70% of what is there, they are done by the southerners. But when you come to the south here, story, story, once upon a time, we continue to be. Is it not time for us to have everything? Rewind their mental tape and start reasoning. And most of us abroad, doing one thing or the other. By next two weeks, I will give you a clip of what I'm doing in a particular land where I'm bringing some of us that left this land 400, 500 years ago. I'm about to restart resettling them. And when this resettling is done in different parts of the southern part, you will see the mean of boost and boost of economy. Our economy become better than Dubai, become better than the places we are going to live as a slave racism and you are living in a, a mortgage life everything is mortgage your house, your food is mortgage even your air is mortgage and you are living in a mortgage system where you where you are not yourself your life is under control you are a prisoner a of conscience a prisoner of mind but here in your own home it is your home you cannot abandon your home and live in another man's culture, another man's country. And who developed those countries? Where are the developers? You are the developers. So I'm asking you, why do you abandon your home? What is wrong with our mental? What is wrong with our reasoning? What is wrong with what we are giving? Freedom and reason make you human being. But when by you no longer free, have freedom, you no longer reason, then you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be a beast. But I'm not abusing you, but I'm trying to tell you, that I also lived like you. But I returned here 11 years ago to have a change. You don't require the masses to have a change. You just require one or two persons who say, listen, I like this vision of producing war. I like the vision of providing enough for the people. Our people are dying of cancer, of diabetes, of HIV, of sicknesses that were caused by food they ate that are all GMO and artificially produced food. That's why we are dying. And a strong, energetic, and disease-resistant resist, resist body is getting weaker. And our next generation will come up as very weak generation because what they're eating is what is going to eat them. So I'm asking you that this thing is not just all about farming. It's all about the holistic, the whole of well, prof, 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 I would like us, uh, I would like us to take another clip, please, to see okay. what can be done in practical terms in, in Biafra land. So they said that we cannot, uh, that they are not going to send onion for us again in this, uh, in the, in the southeast and the south south of But today, we have onion here. Yeah. We can do without them. Yes, Look at it, too. Look at onion, though. Look at it very, very well. We are very fruitful harvest, but we don't even use fertilizer, sir. But we have, we have, we have, we have, we have enough harvest like this. Hmm? 
We can do without them. Look at them. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing them? Very big, hmm? very big. See the very big, very big, mighty, very big. Mighty, mighty onion. Stop them. Let them, let them go with the onion. Go with the onion. <laughs> Yeah, prof. Uh, prof. Nobody is a monopoly college. And nobody is a monopolist. Yeah. So we can actually produce what we eat with, especially with the invention we've created over the years. Yes, the system of cement of empty bag farming can produce virtually everything we need in our own homes. We need to have a big farm. Do you have less than half plots of land? That's enough for you to produce for the entire family to eat. That is exactly what we have now. We compressed, nanonized the farming system. What I mean nanonized, you know what, what is it? That we should reduce it to a minima that one plot of land can feed the whole family. That is exactly what we have come to. I want you to think about this. In the 50s, in the 40s, in the 30s, the whole South, every family has a yam ban, has kukuyam ban. Where they pack the cocoyam on the ground under the sun. Every family has plantain. Every family has banana. Prove me wrong if what I'm saying is not true. We had all these things. We were not buying food in the market. Every family has pepper. Every family has all. Every family has those things. Everyone. Now we are now introducing to you that every family can has English can have English apple. Every family can have strawberry every family can have english group every family can now have on virtually all things now there's something that we also mention you're going to ask us we have acquired two three mining cells, uh, sites at a salt which is stone salt rock salt is the real one that gives you health the salt we're using in our market today causes high blood pressure I'm telling you, we are in this field of health management and also in the field of animal and plant production. We are in them. I tell you that what we have in the East is holistic. We have source. We have oil. Now, as you, I'm not talking about petrol, no, no. I'm talking about palm tree oil. I'm talking about coconut oil. We're talking of um, oil. We're talking of carrot oil. We're talking of grapefruit oil. You don't know what we have gone into. When I'm mentioning these oils, we are talking of plantain oil. We're talking of these oils. We are getting our machines not importing from China. We don't have importation fever. We are not sick people in the mind. We are doing it as we did it 1967 to 1970. We did not import. We did not import. We had our own refinery. We had our own farm. We have our own machines. We produce everything by ourselves. And the whole world fought us, warned us to bomb our farms, bomb our markets. That's why we are not able to go to farm. And they know that if you stop people from going to the farm, and that's what caused Kwashoko. So now our people can return back to basics, can return back to culture, return back to their tradition, return, have a rejuvenation, have a growth, have a return to what you are, to regional, to the origin, to what you are. This, this is not religion. This is not praying. This is not fasting. This is not speaking in tongues. We're talking about practical returning to keep yourself, have your own confidence of who who you are. Our first four bitter wars to make us live in the peaceful land we're having today. What are you going to leave behind for the upcoming generation? We're going to leave behind nodules. We're going to leave behind artificial foods. We're going to leave behind that the thing that are produced by GMO. We're going to leave behind sensors that kill their, their nervous system that will destroy their the rays of light that will kill them. That's what we're going to leave behind. We're going to leave behind fantasy houses. We're going to leave behind fantasy cars imported from this, imported from that. My brother, the group here inside, we are going to export them. We are going into a science. We are going into an increase a war. And this war must be won. Economic war is the greatest war on earth. 
we must win that war. And the enemy we have is ourselves. That's the only enemy you have. Yourself, your test board, your test and desire for imported and everything imported, imported. We get our machines done, fabricated. We don't import any machine. Machine for frying or machine of blue or garlic, machine of production of oil. We produce them here. Everything is done. If you want to bring them online, they are in the kindergarten stages. But I can bring them online. But normally, my own self, I believe the results should speak. Results should speak. I don't believe in saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to. When I finish, because in the process of doing, I may fail, I may pass. In the process of failing and passing, I don't want to show you that so that you won't be discouraged. But I want to show you results. You don't know how we arrive at the result. We are at the result because collectively we have a mission. Collectively we have a vision. It was that. This is a war. The war is on hunger. The war is on health. The health industry, the health industry disappointed black man. I'm sorry to use the word black man. I know nobody's black. I know nobody's white. Not that I don't know that. But I'm telling you that Burgians are being, you are not a poor nation. You are not a developing nation. You are not poor. These things are intimidatory. You will not have any poor mind. Go and look into history and find out that most discoveries of what they are using, your air condition, your automatic gear, selector, you are um, going to the moon, they were done by Africans. They were done by your people. But you have been deceived. You told say you are nothing. But even if they say you are nothing, Tell them that a nothing is something existing in nothingness. Therefore, it is something. And when a nothing has a name called nothing, it becomes something. And because it's zero, which is 360 degrees, where they are struggling with 100%. So tell them, talk to them as they when they see it, that we are here trying to recreate again. Don't tell me Africa is poor. Africa is continent. It has the quarter of the wealth in the world. This is where you have the gold. This is where you have the diamond. This is where you have everything that's stealing. Everything that's taking from us. They're still even our minds, our nation, they're stealing our own blueprint, they're stealing our marker, markers, M A R C A E R marker, 168 marker, M dash 168 marker. The man who is talking to you is well exposed, so I know what I'm talking about. What we are looking for is where are the people, where are the gladiators, where are the people who say we are going to, it's not uh, 419, it is not. And it's working. It is you investing and reaping for investments. And in the process of the reaping for you, you will be serving the youth from globe, running around the globe, globe totally looking for green pasture. And in the process, they lose their kidneys, they lose their lives, and they are torn to sex slaves. Our women are torn to sex slaves. Our men are torn to sex in every come and there your life you're not sure of your life because anything can happen to you there you're not a citizen but if you have invested here you will ask yourself why were you scattered all over the world you are scattered all over the world to bring the world to the world back to your home and develop your own home so that you have a place to return are you going to live abroad forever and not have busy those in this prayer because i was one of them but i'm telling you why we're here we are not looking for your money. We are asking you to come and take the land free of charge. That's another thing. And I told you next week I'm going to a good cake where I'm giving a whole village to somebody. What I mean, a village, more than 7,000 hectares of land to somebody for 90, 90 years free. So I don't want anybody to tell me or to say there are no lands here. It is one of the lies they have told you. And if lie is told for 100 years or more than 100 years or whatever number of years, it becomes and when it comes to truth by someone who's a rebel, a, a rebel, I want you to know that there are enough land masses here, enough land to feed the whole world. I repeat, right here in the southeast, there is to feed the whole world. If we can farm and take over our bushes, we should stop complaining that the full did this, this one did that. Where did they find shelter? Where did those full find shelter? Where did they find shelter? They found shelter in abandoned forests for 40 years, for 30 years, we have abandoned them. So we should stop complaining. We should be active in positive confession and positive and seeing results in whatever positive things we are doing and get it done. Because if we are taking over the bushes and farming there, nobody can come and live in those places and attack you. 
those are the things I'm saying. Remember, this is Fudism war. Remember, this is Fudism war. Remember, it's a war. It's a war declared on health. It's a war declared on our food shop poverty. We to be impoverished again. We can use our land to get whatever we need. Anything you need in this world is inside the land. Your body is inside the land. Everything is within the land. But because of damage psych, because of psychological attack on your own psych, you believe you are nothing. But as I have defined today, nothing is something, existing in nothingness. Therefore, it has an end called nothing. Therefore, it is something. So that is exactly what I want to tell you. I want to beg you, those who are listening, and those who listen from the copy we're going to say Facebook, please invest. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you for that uh, brief explanation. Normally, this program goes every Friday, but due to the situation we find ourselves, we didn't do it so today, Sunday. So please bear with us. And we hope that by next Friday, we'll be coming back uh, to continue from where we start. And Prof, I've seen a lot of people reach me out. They want to reach out to you. And I've also tried to give one or two to contact to do have been pressuring to uh, so if you get uh, people reach you uh, most of the time and they reach you through me sharing your contact Prof, i want us to round up this program and uh, you've said it all and i believe that by now our people are supposed to stand up we have grown past the stage where we complain about food lack of food and uh, I'll be creating some in my own um, community here to see how we can give uh, food supply to our people. Food in Africa, how do, do they get food across the rock here in Europe? We also have to find a way uh, to uh, go into agriculture and only to and uh, supply who need. Uh, some tables and stuff. I think that Prof is uh, having network issues and I hope that he comes back to bid us farewell for today. And I want to use this opportunity to uh, tomorrow night of um, of August uh, is a Monday sitting and I want to encourage our people to observe that sitting home as much as possible to make sure that uh, they participate in that activity. Uh, Professor Ark. Yeah, yeah, uh, have, yes, so I, I would like us to, so that we can round it up, uh, we spent over 30 minutes, we just want this program to be as brief as possible, so that we will come back by next week. Uh, yeah, we're already in a new week, Friday, we'll be able to get more clips of things you've done within the week as well. To show our people uh, about the progress being made so far. Yes, what we are saying is, you send money from abroad, and they keep eating the money. The law do not give people fish; teach them how to catch fish. The money you are sending every month or every year is enough to set up a farm that will start producing for them, and they will self rely. That is exactly what I'm asking you. I did that also, like you. I spent money, I sent money. At the end of sending the money, the money never become an investment. The money became a total of my flesh. So it is better for you to send $500, $200, and they will use it to start off a farm. I'm telling you, $100 is enough to start off a farm, a very big farm for the family. But you're spending thousands of dollars to giving the money. They are going to waste that money. I encourage them to meet us, go to their home. We help them to set up small farms. And the team will start yielding bigger, bigger, and bigger. And the investment will become something that will bring about uh, profits in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that we'll be coming back by Friday. And uh, we'll be happy to get some of your activities recorded so we can show people things you are doing on the ground uh, to give them that uh, conviction. It's not just about Facebook, uh, you know, coming here to talk every day, uh, but that there are realities on the ground 
uh, we we'll continue to show them and encourage them to embrace whatever they, their hearts lay on. You know, you can actually use any crop of your choice. Make a choice of where, which area to uh, invest and uh, grow it within your environment. If you are really determined, we've seen uh, how uh, Professor have explained how we can actually grow onions. And these are, these are kind of uh, vegetables you can actually grow within your environment. You water them, you decide how they grow, you run the whole and come up with an excellent result. And I think in this uh, 21st century, we no longer allow certain things to, um, you know, to elude us, especially when we have the knowledge at our hand. So I want to say thank you very much. I want to say happy uh, Sunday to us. And until we meet you guys again, I will remain your humble and also Professor Chinedu Abodike, the man who has proved that everything is possible. Prof, I want to say, have a wonderful day as you are. All right, see you on Friday. Thank you. Thank you very much.